Right here I'm holding AMD's Wraith Prism Cooler, which was released with their last year previous generation Ryzen 2000 chips, namely the Ryzen 7 2700X. This CPU cooler was easily the best included box cooler I have seen to date with any CPU, having the RGB bling and also having the cooling performance. However, this time around the Ryzen 7 3700X and also all the X CPU lineup in the Ryzen 3000 series chips include this cooler. And so, especially coming in at a price point of $329 for the 8 core 16 threaded 3700X, I decided to run some tests here today where I'm comparing this cooler against a 360 millimeter radiator on an X570 board, as well as throwing in an X370 motherboard to see if you really need to go out and spend that extra money on a bigger and beefier cooler when it comes to getting the most out of your 8-core 16-threaded chip. I've also decided to test out the 3900X, which is currently the flagship desktop CPU from AMD, the 12-core option, and they will be releasing the 3950X later this year. But the 3900X also comes included with the race Prism. So with the TDP coming in at 125 watts, it got me thinking, how much performance would you be losing if you just stuck with this over going out and spending your hard-earned on a bigger, more expensive cooler? Let's find out. Welcome back to Tech Yesterday. And without wasting any more of your time, we decided to run a few different tests here at different settings. First of all, I tested out the Deep Cool Castle 360mm water cooler. This comes included with three fans, and they have improved the design of this cooler especially compared to Deepcool's previous water coolers where I thought they were really mediocre, this one does an excellent job of cooling as well as keeping the noise down. But that aside, we decided to test the Precision Boost Overdrive 2 settings, where if you guys haven't seen my review yet, I'll put the link up here. Basically, the PBO2 settings on the X570 motherboards was phenomenal to the point where it finds the sweet spot for your CPU automatically in terms of single-threaded and multi-threaded clock speeds, and it does an excellent job. Basically, my recommendation would be to go out, get one of these chips, the Ryzen 3000 CPUs, put it in an X570 motherboard, and just have happy days. But what if you want to micro and say get a cheaper motherboard, like an X370 or B350, which does support the new Matisse CPUs, and still use this race cooler? Well, let's pull up the results for you guys first of all. With the 3700X, we managed to get Cinebench R20 scores that were really close to each other with the water cooler versus the rate prism. And then going over to the gaming benchmarks, Far Cry New Dawn, we had 120 average FPS versus 120 average FPS. Tom Clancy's The Division 2 did show a slightly higher score, but again, this is so negligible and it really makes the argument for the rate being an exceptional value for money option with this CPU. Now, the all-core clocks on an IDA64 stress test after 10 minutes, we did see the all-core clock speeds on the 3700X max out to around 4.2 gigahertz, where the raised prism that went down to around 4.125 gigahertz. The power consumption on both stayed around 90 watts. The temperatures on the race did go up to around 85 degrees, whereas on the castle they did go to 71 degrees. So there was a 14 degree difference and also a 75 megahertz all boost clock speed difference. But really when it comes down to it, is it worth that extra $150 for something that really isn't that big of a difference. I'll let you guys be the judge with that one, but let's look up next the race on the 3900X, where it actually performed quite surprisingly very similar to the 3700X. The gaming benchmarks showed similar FPS in Far Cry New Dawn, and moving over to Tom Clancy's The Division 2, we did get a slight FPS boost on the water cooler by about four average FPS. Now in terms of temperatures, they were in favor of the water cooler by about 10 degrees, where we maxed out at 81 degrees, and that had an all-core boost, again, of roughly 4.2 gigahertz. It does tend to fluctuate, however, so it's very hard to get an exact reading because that's how PBO2 boost works. It's essentially constantly changing the clock speeds on you, and in the case of the single-threaded clock speeds, they manage to stay around the same speeds, where on the Cinebench scores, just like we saw with the 3700X, they scored roughly the same, when it came to that single core count score. The all core count score in the Cinebench R20 scored only 100 points less. 
However, this is where things get a little bit trickier because again, once we're running the IDA64 stress test over a 10 minute period, we start to weed out variants. So we saw a 4.075 all-core clock speed on the Race Spire versus a 4.2 gigahertz. So on the 3900X, it does start to make a little bit more of a difference going with an aftermarket cooling solution, but also keeping temperatures down, whereas opposed to the race on the 3700X, the differences were pretty negligible. The power consumption sweet spot on these tests for the 3900X did go around 135 watts, where on the race it topped out at 134 watts consumption, then on the 3900X, topped out at 136 watts. So basically the Precision Boost Overdrive 2 works in a number of factors. It'll take into account the temperatures, the voltages, and also the clock speeds to quite simply automatically find a sweet spot for your current setup. Now I do believe this also takes into account ambient temperatures. If you live in a hotter climate or a cooler climate, you'll probably see different results to what I've got here today. But the last test I decided to do with the Race Prism, also the 3700X, was put that in a budget X370 motherboard. This is the Gigabyte Gaming K3. Now I did have to update the BIOS to the latest F40 revision, but after I did that, everything booted up smoothly. It even supported the 3600 megahertz memory that I used with CL16 timings, absolutely no problems. However, I found it was a little bit trickier in this BIOS because the voltage adjustments were plus and minus, so they weren't as simple as whacking in, say for instance, 1.36 volt, which was around about the sweet spot on a water cooler for my 4.3 gigahertz all core overclock on both the 3900X and also the 3700X. So the options were a bit more limited on this budget motherboard, but I still managed to give it plus 0.1 volt and then lock in an all core speed of 4.1 gigahertz and that ran absolutely fine, scoring great temperatures and keeping the power still pretty low for granted the amount of power you have on eight cores and 16 threads, and then moving over to Far Cry New Dawn and also Tom Clancy's, the FPS wasn't far behind that of the X570 with Precision Boost Overdrive 2 on. And do keep in mind, I did test this out with an RTX 2080 Ti, and these are in CPU demanding titles. So if you're gonna go with the cookie cutter Ryzen 7 3700X build, and couple it with a cheaper motherboard and maybe get two sticks of 3000 megahertz memory and go with a mid-range graphics card, you're basically gonna notice next to no difference even compared to that of a 9900K in practically any gaming title out there. So the value proposition of the Wraith Cooler is really good whether you're pairing it with an X570 motherboard or going with a budget motherboard. It's awesome to see that AMD is just really giving so much value, not just in the terms of their Zen 2 CPUs in the way it performs and also the power efficiency, but also the included cooler is an extra added bonus that will do a great job. And it's nothing to be afraid of, I guess, if you're an enthusiast and you want the latest and greatest, but you're still budget orientated and that you wanna save the most amount of money possible. Getting the CPU, especially the 3700X with that included cooler and not have to worry about going out and spending extra money on a more expensive cooler is a very solid option if you just wanna go with the race prism. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also let us know in the comment section below what you think of the Ryzen 3000 videos coming out here on the channel. Are you enjoying everything Zen 2? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And if you're enjoying the videos that much and you haven't subscribed already, button's down there and you also might wanna ring the bell if you wanna see the videos the moment they drop. With that said, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.